Security Live. This is a show focused on AWS and AWS security challenges solved by AWS partners. Well, and I'm, AWS. And AWS. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're your hosts. I'm Ryan Orsi, head of Cloud Foundations Partners, joined by... Hi, I'm Merritt Vera. I am in the office of the CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer here at AWS. Today... We have a cool guest for you. This is Wiz. Can you tell us a little bit about Wiz and tell us about you and, and how this plays into what we're solutioning for customers in particular? I think, you know, we, like, going back years now, Steve Schmidt and other folks have talked about democratizing security. And right. part of that is not, like, it's not aspirational, it's literal. We embed security engineers in our teams, you know, like, but how do you conceive of this and how can we better the playing field as we think about democratizing security? Yeah, thanks. So, um, I'm Inon Kosika, I'm running product management for uh, Wiz. Wiz is a cloud security company. We are the fastest growing SaaS company in the world today. They're pretty rad. exciting. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and basically, um, ba as you're saying, we help organizations to have visibility to their cloud environments and democratize security in a way that enables them really to move much faster and adopt cloud in a safer way manner while enabling the engineering teams to take the right action as they build into the cloud. So basically, I, I think that in order to understand it, we, we need to remember like one situation that I think in the security space we all remember, which is basically Log4Shell. So you remember Log4Shell hitting us in December uh, 2021. Sure, we had sure. uh, one I, week how before could the I holiday. Forget? How can we forget? So basically, like as soon as we heard about the uh, Log4Shell vulnerability, I think the first reaction was, what? How can we have a CVSS 10 vulnerability uh, in such a basic library, pervasive library, basically in every Java application? And the very next question was like, where do we have this library? What now? Where, yeah. What now? Where do we have it? And not only where do we have it, once we realize it's everywhere, every container, right. serverless. How, how long to take a patch? It, how well, not just that, it. but like, I think there's a lot around Log4j and Log4Shell that were basically implying that we need to have these muscle groups. Like, it's not that like this was such a one-off, it's that we should anticipate, like, we need to get good at this as a ritual. Exactly, uh, that's exactly the thing. And we realize we have more and more apps, more and more vulnerabilities, and we need to have this muscle group that basically will uh, allow us to identify quickly and then ask a very, like how can we mobilize the teams to fix it as much as possible. And this is why democratizing security becomes so important because if we're just one security team consolidating everything with centrally, then we, we basically hold back on the teams, right? So yeah, you want can't be the shop of no. Yeah. I mean, like everyone's got to get stuff done, but also like we got to be enablers. I mean, True. security at this point is part of what you are delivering to any customer, whoever you are, right? Like if you're an automotive or a manufacturing shop or a whatever, like what you are, it's not just about keeping you up, although that matters. It's also about what you deliver downstream. Like what you are delivering is a security inheritance that your customers inherit. Exactly. And I think that at Wiz, we realize that organizations at any scale, any size, can basically any 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 part of the maturity level to cloud can actually democratize cloud security in three simple steps to enable this quick path to remediation to to basically develop this. I have a group. feeling you're about to tell us these. It's three getting steps. interesting. You know, uh, what, <laughs> what are these three steps? So this is for engineering, right? Yeah, this is for, for engineering, not for, just for, yeah. For I think here. so. Just, but I think that's a fair point. Like to clarify, what we're talking about is making security ownership democratized in the sense that like engineering folks can take, can and should and must take ownership of security. And part of this is kind of inherently cloudy because the minute you spin up a cloud formation template, you know whether you have an internet facing endpoint or not, right. or at least you can reason about that. Uh, you know, like, so there are elements of this that are, um, that are the woven inness of security exactly. in cloud. So you enable the engineering woven team, in. but they need to assume responsibility on I the security. That's a good word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go ahead. And the first one is really gaining visibility to anything, anything that happens across your cloud environment. Yeah. 
The second thing is everything's an API call. I mean, everything like you is can, an API call. Meanwhile, you, and that's in CloudTrail. And then, meanwhile, you can have CPU usage and other things, exactly. and, and then you reason on top of those. So the question is really gaining visibility to everything. Second is how do you use context to prioritize? Because if you bombard your teams with noise, it won't help them. You need to prioritize ruthlessly right. using the context. Just and getting it doesn't exactly. They this have a, they have the a few priorities, action. don't they? So how do you exactly. how do you how do you how do you prioritize that? For exactly. The so prioritizing and the third step is really empowering them to take an action. So let's start with the first. How do we gain visibility? So we have a really cool technology that can have full visibility to anything within a single API connector. The way it works, we connect to the cloud APIs, we analyze the cloud configuration, the cloud resources, but then we actually analyze the workloads. So the technology analyzes snapshots, container images, serverless function code. So within five minutes, any organization at any scale, and this is a benefit of the cloud, can basically have full visibility to anything that runs within it. And that's immense power, full visibility, completely right. frictionless, no agents, up and running in minutes, one single cloud role. And I mean, the whole point here is that you get that muscle group, right? You decide what actions to take. And I think the point is, we work our butts off to, um, I was like, can I say that? Sure. I think, I think you can say uh, that. <laughs> to, <laughs> to externalize products, right, that, that we know you want, right? So GuardDuty was initially just like, watch your VPC flow logs for anomalies. You know, like we built stuff that we hear you telling us we need. Meanwhile, you know, you can build this on top to allow folks to, you know, what might have been an ETL job that feels friction filled and heavy. And instead, you're also able to see across customers and gain the intelligence intelligence of like what we know. I mean, one of the things I know is for is their security researchers. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of the ways that folks are looking at the landscape and able to then articulate on top of it. And again, this is very cloudy. Right? Yes, exactly. So the ability to have full visibility, direct access to great signal like guard duty. We ingest that as well. We just launched it this uh, Reinforce, I oh, don't know. Hey. Uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> basically, everything integrates to one place. You have full visibility. And then the question, how do you use all of this in order to prioritize? Right. And the priorities actually happen. We use uh, graph technologies, AWS Neptune. Amazing a graph database, graph as a service. We actually take all of the signal that we get, whether So we, you're running on AWS too. We're running on AWS Neptune for the contextualization. Cool. Yep. Of course, and basically we analyze all of these signal like vulnerabilities, guard duty, uh, misconfigurations, the VMs, the configuration, the network configurations, all of this in one single way, place that allows us to basically contextualize. And maybe I can uh, show yeah. you one short slide just how sure. we contextualize this. So basically, we start with a vulnerability, let's say log for shell on a cloud Got resource. It. But Got then it. We we're use, playing this out. We use a workload context. So what else exists on this workload? We use the cloud context. So what okay. it has access to in terms of permission, Exposures, yep. and then we All can learn which the we business can, We can re, like reason about because of the nature. I know this sounds like we are being overly explanatory, but I don't think this should be taken for granted. Like, take something like config and config rules. Like, just the idea that every time a configuration change happens, it triggers an action. I mean, like, these are radical, and I think, I mean. They're kind of rad in the sa mm -hmm. like San Diego way, but um, no, they're kind of radical, right? The, the no contextual uh, way that we are thinking about the information that we're getting, which is to say, everything is an API call, and it goes over the open internet. You and know, like protected by SIG v4. It's pretty neat. Pretty neat, and now you can use it I as context. Rad like you've never been able to use before. So the yep. context now allows you to say, not only you have a cloud resource that has a log for shell, but listen to this, it is internet exposed. It mm -hmm. has a secret that leads to a very uh, cloud identity that has access to a very sensitive bucket. And guess what? It's in your production environment. So out of all the instances of, of, instances of log for shell, this is the one you really need to fix before the holidays. Yeah. That That's helps context. answer my question. It's, <laughs> always, is the most it's important. always on a Friday before a holiday, yeah. you know, <laughs> as security people Exactly, we know. <laughs> or before like a very long holiday. <laughs> so that's basically the slide cool. we can uh, get there. Yeah, I am. Um, so I want to talk a little more about the ways in which folks should be operationalizing yes. this. Like, what do we do with it? When we say democratize, like, I guess two questions. One is, how do we think about this within the organization? Because one of the questions I, like, you know, permanently get is, 
How do you do it? How okay. do your engineers not get mad at you every day because <laughs> you're the secure? It, like, they're watching and they're saying you're you're deploying stuff all the time. Make how them appreciate you, you, right? No, <laughs> but they no. The c customers are genuinely curious how we are not at odds with each other all the time, <laughs> and the and the, this usually comes in the form of a question that's like, how do you build a culture of security? Yeah. To which my answer is usually like by doing it, but um. But I would love to hear how this can help folks operationalize that. Yeah. And, then, and then on the operational, like taking action, what form does that take? Yeah, so um, great question. So first, think about the engineering team that they thought they need to fix 1,000 issues. Uh, but in fact, you came back to them and you told them, no, you know what? Forget about this 999. Fix this one. Start because here. Start here. So they won't say, they won't push back. Actually, they will say, how did you know? Oh my God, we haven't realized that this instance is actually this, we call it toxic combinations mm -hmm. that we really need to focus on. And that drives a change because now you gain more trust. And the worst thing you can do with engineers is send them noise. The best thing is to wow them with, we knew something that you actually didn't realize about your environment. And that's exactly what the graph correlation allows you to you do. You I mean, let's and be, now you're a hero. Let's be home, honest. Everyone just like wants to go home. And so if you tell them what they have to do before they're done, you know, like uh, yeah. we're all just humans. And they haven't realized it. And once they understand that they have this very critical issue, they're incentivized naturally to fix it because they, they see the risk now. So this mm. changes the whole behavior, and mm. I think that's the key. And also using the graph, we visualize it, so it's very simple for them to understand. So even if they're not very versed into the security nuances and so on, they simply get it. And I think mm -hmm. these are the two critical components of basically enabling, and now we can talk about democratization. It's simple, it's visual, now we can basically grant them access to the Wiz portal, for instance, or in general to the security tooling. And it's very important that every engineer that builds to the cloud is also able to consume the risks. So now they have visibility, they can sure. own it, and now they're incentivized to fix it. So how do we fix it? And by the way, the access is done through ABAC. Okay, so basically you have the tagging ah, on the resources. ABAC. We pull this as ABAC. Attribute-based access control. We're talking about fine-grained things like tags and other things that you can implement at API scale. And, you know, they are extremely dynamic. You can uh, reason about them. You can augment them. You can tag them with, you know, s explicit security things, so like a compliance framework. But you could also tag them with, like, I mean, tags came out of billing, right? So, like, you can know what your cost center is and other things that matter. Yeah. So maybe one last slide. What do we do with this? So we were able to grant them access to the security issues. Now we actually humanize the risk. It's not only for security professionals. It's humanized. And we make it actionable. So we show them what happened, why, why they should care, basically. Here is evidence that you can see for yourself. Here is what we recommend to do. And here is a list of things you can it's do right speaking now. Speaking of recommendations. Speaking of humans and recommendations. We are running out of time. And yes. we are closing out Reinforce. The last We are one. closing Reinforce. Pretty Amazing rad. Content. Thank you so much. <laughs> Radical. <laughs> um, all right, one question. What do you recommend for dinner tonight? Oh my God, I love Indian food. I will uh, love it. But since we're in Boston, I'm going to get a lobster. <laughs> that's a better answer. That's, that's, that's a great sounds answer. Sounds delicious. Well, thank you, Gunan, for joining us. Thank you so much. And thanks for tuning in, folks. I appreciate it. Take